going on everybody it's your boy inside 11 and welcome to the mind of a goddamn astral traveler and today we're talking about you know um your daily choices as far as nothing is real until you make it real so what do i mean by that you know you as a spirit you have a possession of a soul and that soul operates itself through the system we call the body so nothing is real as far as everything is a conscious wave of reality until you drop that thing down to a particle and it actually starts to produce an adrenaline rush or a hormonal rush uh, based on however you correlated what's going on in your external reality. So, you know, let's say that you are at work because, you know, a lot of people struggle with keeping up their vibrations, uh, you know, maintaining their uh, elevated state, maintaining their connection with their higher selves and, uh, you know, trying to avoid as much as possible dropping down to your lower self or, you know, your animalistic self, your... Uh, you know, reptilian self and things like that, and, you know, moving based on survival based instincts, rather than you moving from a, moving around from a place of abundance, because you know, both spectrums are going to lead to complete different outcomes and complete different manifestations, you know, a lot of people subconsciously are very inspired when they see somebody who's living in the in abundance, uh, somebody who doesn't have lack, because all we've ever seen on TV and all we've ever seen from the people around us, or, uh, you know, behaviors that display uh, lack all around us but you know when i look at the grass in the field it grows up effortlessly effortlessly it doesn't have to try when i see the sun rising it it doesn't strain it doesn't sweat it just get up when i see the moon going through its different phases i don't see it struggling when i see the seasons transitioning from one season to another i don't see it struggling or anything like that so there's so struggle you know it's something that this harmonious arrangement even created for us the concept that you even have to work hard to get some of the cost that you have to slave away and you know make this amount of retirement and you know and but remember these concepts they all give us these concepts just based on them wanting to maintain us in a certain vibration so they will never tell you okay you go figure it the fuck out no no no, no. we'll figure it out for you and we want you to stay within our polarity of things so they make us bipolar and all types of things and all, all, all types of shit like that so you know for example, like we don't even need a choice between two de two parties. How come we can't have like five, six, seven parties? How come we can't we change the structure of those things? But people want to give you the the two plates and tell you, hey, you can either eat from plate one, or you can either from plate two. And a lot of people don't present you with option C, but option C is the option that uh you need to make for yourself and things like that. This is why it's important for you to be in a space of abundance rather than a space of lack because because whenever you have lack in yourself whenever you experience poverty within yourself you're only getting ready to see an example of that outside of because you actually or we actually believe that that's real and that's the only way things can be so for example some dudes might not believe that there's an option such as okay let me go out and meet, meet a female who has similar interest in me or maybe we can agree to terms and conditions that we can both agree on so we can both be in each other's space and not be bothered by each other this is the problem to deal with a lot of arranged marriages and things like that like yeah you, but think about the space it's coming from it's coming from a space of survival needing to continue something it's coming from a lower instinct of survival like you just want to fuck but when you fuck you're gonna have children out of like wetlock lower desires not necessarily out of wetlock you can even be married but the children that's getting ready to come out of that it's going to be really traumatized children children that it's going to carry on the sins of the father and the mother and things like that so that's why it's really important for us to live in this space of abundance where we see more for ourselves so that even the seed that you give birth to can you know see that as well in themselves and they see you and they see you as their father or mother and when they see you, you're not operating within the matrix of fear, doubt, and disbelief. That's also going to empower them to be operating in a higher matrix or, you know, uh, I don't want to say it's not about higher or lower necessarily, but I mean, so we're just comparing both of the spectrums of poverty and uh, doubt. Because, you know, there's always uh, duality, two sides, I think, Democrats, Republicans, a hate, love, uh, wisdom, stupidity, you know, however you want to look at it, all these different synonyms that the English language presented with. But even those cinnamons are just another trap for you not to view option C. You might be able to make up a whole new word about a whole new variable that only you found. Just because 
you actually put yourself in that space and you made something new possible. Like for example, the company I'm working at right now, um, no one dare to sue the company for certain things, but I hear certain employees sued the company just based on them having certain knowledge about the labor laws and things like that. And they made something new possible. The employer is going to sit in front of you and make you sound, make it sound scary. Or nah, see, we don't do this. See, uh, we know what, what we're doing and the, you guys can't get away with that. Blah, 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 blah. But they made something entirely new happen because they wasn't operating in a state of, oh, this is not possible and things like that. So nothing is real until you make it real. You know, whatever you're doing in life, whether, you know, in your mind, you have it in your mind that, you know, doing that workout at the gym is going to be hard. Okay, so it's done onto you as you believe. Now you have actually summoned and conjured those variables within your mind for you to think and feel about that today's workout is going to be hard. And, you know, you don't need to necessarily separate completely from the things that you are not participating or can't do because they're new to you. You can just start putting in percentage levels on those. Okay, today you're going to do 10 minutes at the gym. Tomorrow you're going to do 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. The point is your ego your state of poverty, the parasites within you, they're not going to let go of you because they like you. They want a home to live in. So they're not going to be like, okay, you know, like today we're leaving, I guess, like he today he decided. No, they're going to keep coming back and they're going to keep manifesting situations, thoughts and feelings within you. It's going to remind you of the position that you've been in for the last 10 years and things like that. But none of it is real until you actually accept it in your mind as real. And... You might even manifest symptoms as well, like sweating. You might manifest symptoms as, a, as an accelerated heart rate because it's something But you should really be happy because that means that you are actually excited to do something. See, it's, excite, it's a mix of excitement and it's a mix of nervousness, but it's because you're actually getting ready to do something you've never done. Your body has never went through those experiences. Your body has never released those chemicals by you even thinking and feeling that way. So the first time when you put it in your mind that, you know, that you're healthy, that you're wise, that you want to be in a great relationship with yourself and you have a great amount of wisdom, your body's going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah bro, look, 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 at, look at the data we have collected from the last 10 years. Yeah, you know, that might not be true. But, but if you keep saying it, I mean, like, I guess we're willing to explore the possibilities of that. And, uh, you know, because your brain doesn't really know what's going on either way. It just knows, like, okay, it has a particular program, certain terms and conditions that it agrees to go forward on daily. You know, you might let the manager at work slap you around and let, uh, uh, you know, make, let him tell you what to do with your time rather than you doing what you want to do with your time. And then obviously some people work at, at nine to five, at eight to nine and things like that. But there's all these different things possible in the universe, but you've only known the possibilities that have existed in your life thus far via the environment you grew up in, via the people you've grown up in. Some people might go to church in the mosque and tell me, nah, brother. Allah is the only God in the world. Well, you know, if Allah was the only God in the world, why does he need to tell you that he is the highest God of God? So what, he needs to overcome other gods to become the highest God? A lot of people don't realize that that's just a golem that somebody created and they're just chasing your mind around with it. Is it a benevolent golem? Is it a non-benevolent golem or deity? Just look at your own life and look at what you've already manifested. If you think you can have more in your life, then... You should allow yourself and create the room for you to have more uh, in life. But those runes, those sigillums, those, uh, you know, correlations, those mathematics that they created to encapsulate you in is not going to allow you to go out and explore more. And a lot of people are on this journey of chasing meaning and reasoning behind their life and what they do and because what they do from day to day is just meaningless, pretty much. So... You got to decide for yourself today, tomorrow, the next month, and the next year, what is it going to mean for you to transform and create a whole new paradigm? Because chances are, you already know what you want to do. You already know what you want to establish in your life as a far as, uh, as, a, far as of a status, as far as of a, you know, a, an, a, a spiritual job, something that can actually fulfill you and things that some people just bake cookies and they find that more fulfilling than, you know, going to work doing a nine to five as an accountant and they're making just as much money if not more than the accountant at work because all these because it's spiritual nature the packaging they created for the cookie you know the how they observed the cookies being you know in the oven and things like that 
they're going to be greater cookies than the ones you can get at Walmart or No Frills because they've actually given it its spiritual, they've given them own personal spiritual energy. That's where the best food, clothes, and all that come from. So you need to choose in your life what's real because somebody else is going to tell you, now look, this is real. This fear is real. If you don't come and pray in the mosque five times a day, you should feel fearful. You should feel regretful. But who told you that? They are just making a suggestion to you and it's up to you to accept those suggestions or not. So keep that in mind also. Because remember, like I said, everything is a wave until it drops into a particle. You might be walking in the mall, you might smell you some chicken. You have two choices. You can either attach yourself to that conscious wave through your senses of smell, or you can just keep doing whatever you was doing based on knowing that you are on a diet or things like that. So there's gonna be all types of global distractions to kind of stop you from going on your path. And really, when you're on your path for the most part, you kind of just make food into a ritual, really, because you understand the chemicals even in the food and you understand how that influences your you know, glands. You understand how that influences the different chemicals and different hormones that you release. And you can just start to do, you know, certain, let's say, ritualistic practices with it that really elevate your life. Because now you're not only just eating an orange for the sake of survival. You know, you, you know, you program that orange, the experience of eating that orange, and you're looking at the color of it. And you're honing in on a whole different frequency and a whole different vibration. So you have to make those daily choices to actually participate consciously in your experience. And not actually be unconscious of your experience. Because when you're taking the back seat, someone else is always taking the front seat. Remember that. Even if you're consciously walking around, this is why Kanye always talked about the sunken place. Because he was always walking around consciously, but subconsciously, he was just sitting, the, sitting in the back seat. And really it was someone else's thoughts and feelings uh, taking on his external expression. I'm not saying like he's a zombie or he's a clone or things like that. But, you know, a lot of the times we might... Celebrities might let their fans uh, or, you know, their managers or whatnot, uh, you know, formulate and construct their opinion around that and bring around the rosy of somebody else. That's why you always see Kanye always like, bursting out like George Bush doesn't like black people, or whatever his reason is, because it's like we all have opinions. And if you actually are choosing to suppress yourself every single day for other people, places and things, you're going to find yourself eventually blowing up and being pissed off. But the reason why you were even experiencing that in the first place is because you're not even consciously participating in your experience, nor are you privy to the subconscious patterns that are going on behind in the back of your head that are actually directing your experience. And a lot of those come from the programming of our geographical locations, our mother and father, and the things we are familiar, familiar with, like work, school, and things like that. So there's certain set of behaviors, certain in, uh, rules that we would not engage in. Because, but whenever you understand the rules of something, you can engage with that and you can create a particular form to fit that situation. So, so there's no such thing as nothing, uh, there's no such thing as something is impossible. There's no such thing as, oh, you can't, or you don't know how to do something. No, you do know how to do it. But remember, it's always done on to you as you believe. So make sure that you, be you believe the highest possible good for yourself because when you manifest that for yourself you're gonna show you you're gonna ask yourself damn well if I can do that what else can I do what else have I been limiting myself to not do so you know that's very 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 important and yeah love y'all appreciate y'all and there's nothing y'all could do about it real shit